Hello, it looks like we are at the top of the hour, so we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Balancing Leadership in Life While Supporting Your Team. So thank you very much. I know you're all very busy, but this means that you're prioritizing wellness, which means you're already a good role model for your teams. My name is Megan Raymond. I'm the Senior Director of Membership and Programs here at WCET. If this is your first WCET webcast or event, welcome and hello to those that I know. As we go through, you can download the slides and we'll also be sharing out a link to the slides, the recording and any resources that will, were shared. If you have questions, please use the question box and feel free to participate in the chat. If you put your question into chat, there's a good chance we'll lose it though. So please put it into the question box. If you'd like to follow along on Twitter, the hashtag is WCT Webcast. Today's moderator is my colleague and friend, Lindsay Downs. She's the Assistant Director of Communications and Community. And you probably get her emails. She is the, uh, the content curator and manager of WCET Mix, our member only community. Please welcome Lindsay. Thanks, Megan. Hi, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here today for our WCET webcast. Uh, you know, Megan and I were chatting a little while ago, and we had the idea to create a theme of wellness for May, since everyone's so busy, but summer can be a great time for professional development, and it's, it's still very important. So with our webcast, our blog, our closer look this month, we thought of focusing on self-care, uh, and instead of just focusing on you know, our own work-life balance, we thought about how we can model self-care and how you can help your team so we all can be the best uh, team members and professionals uh, that we can be. So we, today we invited two wonderful folks to help us with this discussion. Uh, we'll have a quick introduction of our panel, and then we're gonna chat about the benefits of mindfulness, how we can ensure our mental health is the, in the best possible place, and then we hope you'll join with us and have a conversation about these topics and ideas. So with that, I'd like our speakers to go ahead and introduce themselves so we can get down to our great conversation. Uh, Genevieve, did you want to start? Sure. We'll go alphabetically, huh? Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Genevieve Berry, and I am the project, project manager for the Mountain Plains Mental Health Technology Transfer Center, which uh, is sponsored by the Witchy Behavioral Health Unit. Uh, I have a BA in psychology and a lifelong interest and passion in mindfulness. I have completed yoga teacher training, <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not going to make anybody do any yoga while we're here talking about mindfulness. But I am delighted to be able to spend some time on this very important topic with you. Gloria? Oh. Hello, hi everyone. I'm Gloria Niles. I I'm the Director of Online Learning and Academic Technologies for the University of Hawaii System. Uh, I've been an educator for several decades now, but prior to that, I uh, trained as a doctor of chiropractic. So I have also incorporated uh, wellness and holistic health throughout uh, my lifespan and my career. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for being here. We're so thrilled. Uh, so we are going to start out, correct, Jen, that with a quick exercise and then and then move on? Right. So Wonderful. Uh, one of the things that um, I know Gloria and I will be talking about as, as we go on is, is mindfulness. And the point of, of mindfulness is to be present. So it's very easy, and I am as guilty of it as anyone, to have one screen on my training and another screen on my email or my phone going. Or uh, my grandson may come in because I'm working remotely, or his cat may show up. But I'm going to endeavor <laughs> uh, to be very present with you all. And one of the easiest ways to come into the present moment is through our breath. You can do it unobtrusively. You can do it simply, and it just brings you back into the present. It helps to calm down your nervous system. And this is a very common breathing technique. It's called box breathing or four square breathing. So what I'm going to encourage everyone to do is to put down all of your other devices. Maybe close your email if, if you can. I understand how busy everyone is and how difficult that can be. Maybe shake 
shake your body a little bit, get rid of that extra energy. If you just had a phone call that was a little bit trying or you've got a huge to-do list, that's right. Just shake the energy off. And the box breathing goes like this, and I'll lead you. We're going to inhale for four seconds. We're going to hold for four seconds. We will exhale for four seconds, and then we'll release and hold, emptying out for four seconds. If four seconds is too long for you, then please just follow your own pace. Do it two seconds or three seconds. I will tell you that you get the biggest release from tension uh, in the final exhale, in the emptying breath. So let's let's do a practice run, and then I'll run you through several um, several rounds of it. So uh, exhale. All right. Inhale. Ready to the count of four. Inhaling. Two, three, four, hold. Two, three, four. Exhaling. Two, three, four, hold. Two, three, four. Inhale. Two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and one more time, inhaling, two, three, four, Holding, two, three, four. Exhaling, two, three, four. And holding, two, three, four. Mm. And then you might want to take a cleansing breath to return to your normal breathing pattern. And uh, enjoy that moment of calm. <laughs> Gloria? Thank you, Jenny. Uh, that, that's a great centering exercise, and I hope everyone feels more relaxed and present uh, in the moment. Um, and so we have a, a quick poll there that just popped up. So if you want to answer these two questions, thinking about leadership and modeling wellness at your institution. Okay, you see quite a balance, 50-50. Uh, do you think your institutional leadership models wellness? So we're gonna talk a little more about that today and how we can model and uh, create a culture of wellness. And do you think you have good boundaries? Um, close, but a little bit more on the yes side, which is good to see. Uh, also probably why you're prioritized being here today. <clears throat> Uh, so I want to just talk about uh, at the organizational level why this is so important for uh, to balance leadership and the rest of our lives. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is uh, our authenticity and being able to bring our whole self into our work environment. Um, because when we're not able to do that, a lot of our energy uh, and uh, efforts are on masking and you know, shutting down parts of who we are uh, in order to do work. And, and that takes a toll and a tax uh, on our effort and ultimately is going to impact productivity. And so three areas that I wanted to talk about uh, at the organizational level are authenticity and encouraging authenticity 
Uh, part of that is creating an organizational culture that values wellness uh, and then modeling, balancing leadership uh, and work in your in your own practices. And so uh, starting with authenticity is you know really knowing your 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 team members, your colleagues, uh, what they choose to to share about other aspects of their lives, remembering that. And so, uh, you know, we were chatting before and Megan said that her son, she's going to her son's social studies project today. So I might, you know, take note of that and then tomorrow ask her how that went uh, so that, you know, she sees that that I'm remembering that she's also a mom and that's as important as it is uh, to being uh, a valued employee. Uh, and so when our, when our team members know that we're, we value their lives beyond being productive in the job that they do. It helps with productivity. It helps with uh, feeling a sense of belonging uh, in the organization. And um, it just makes for happier employees, Let's put it that way. Um, and so then I also wanted to talk about an organizational culture. Now we all have policies and we have practices. And I've worked a lot of places and I've been in my current position at the system level for the University of Hawaii for a year. And it when I got there, um, one aspect of culture that, that I noticed that I had seen before in many other um, roles uh, is that there seemed to be a, a a badge of honor of how many hours of vacation and PTO uh, that a person had accumulated. Uh, and, you know, whether your policy is that those hours roll over or you have to use them or lose them um, is one policy. But I had a particular employee that is a long term employee, um, and he doesn't travel much and he so he doesn't use his, he wasn't using his vacation time. He was like, I don't go anywhere. I don't need to take a week off. What would I do with a week uh, not working? You know? um, and so we talked about it more. And now he takes off three and a half hours a week. So every Tuesday afternoon, um, he takes off uh, three and a half hours of vacation. And, you know, it's a consistent day of the week. Weather permitting, if it's raining, <laughs> any changes it to a different day. Uh, but we worked out this so that it that three and a half hours uses up his allotted um, vacation time each pay period. And um, he has commented on how much uh, happier and how much how productive uh, it's been since he's been doing that for several months now. Um, so. Again, having policies, but what are the what are the practices and what what's valued? And that's uh, just one example of centering uh, wellness within your culture. You have this time off, use it, uh, and encouraging employees uh, to utilize their time away um, as opposed to prioritizing. You know, you need to be here. You need to get these done. We have deadlines and uh, things to do. That's all extremely important. It's why we do our jobs. Uh, but at the same time, you want to create a culture where that centers wellness uh, and centers the whole individual uh, who, who is part of your team. Uh, and then modeling. Uh, I know for many of us as leaders, uh, that's the hardest part. Uh, having our email 24-7 on our phone and feeling like we have to respond right away to everything, um, that we have to be overachievers, uh, many of us who are in leadership positions. Um, yes, or Slack. <laughs> Slack, uh, it, it even extends to, to social media, you know, following the university's social media accounts and, um, you know, following everything that's happening on LinkedIn. Um, can can intrude on other parts of our lives and, and can intrude on our own balance. And so part of creating that organizational culture is modeling balance as a leader. Um, I also am mindful, I 
I personally, my circadian rhythm is that I get up very early in the morning, which works out well for the time zone that I live in. <laughs> in Hawaii, we're, we're behind almost all other times. So it's 8.15 in the morning right now here in Hawaii. Um, but uh, so I'm up really early, which is helpful because I have several hours early in the morning, um, but I I make it a point of not emailing anyone on my team who's here in Hawaii at the time. Um, because I know that when I get an email from somebody higher than me, I feel an immediate need to respond to that, regardless of what time it came in. So I, I used to work at one of our campuses and I had a chancellor who had were similar to mine, and she would uh, she would do her email at three o'clock in the morning before she went to um, boot camp. So she would we would get emails at three or four in the morning. Um, I happen to be awake at that time, so I'm responding. But if you get an email from your chancellor uh, and you're an administrator and you don't see it for three or four hours, you know it, it creates the sense of oh my goodness, my chancellor emailed me and I didn't respond. So even though we can say, you know, I don't expect you to respond outside of, of business hours, I make it a point to you, you know, to schedule sends. So I might prepare emails at four in the morning, uh, but I schedule the send for eight or nine o'clock in the morning, um, uh, just to model that balance of, of when I'm communicating with, with my team. Now, of course, I work in information technology, so it's a 24 seven operation. Uh, and there are things that we do have to be aware of, but as far as referring to my uh, traditional work schedule team members, Monday through Friday, who work 7.45 to 4.30, I, I try to keep communication within that time frame and not communicate, not send emails um, on weekends or after hours or before hours. Um, and so also, you know, being mindful of our own uh, circadian rhythm. We all have times when we're most productive in the day and times when we are least productive in the day uh, and scheduling our work around that um, so that what we, how we manage our, our time in the day so that we're doing things that need our full attention and mental alertness and sharpness. We're scheduling them for those times of the day um, and, and allowing our, our team the opportunity to do that as well, um, to schedule their work around their circadian rhythm um, is also a way of modeling and supporting an organizational culture of wellness. So I'll stop there because we want to make sure we have enough time for this to be interactive. Um, and so I'm going to turn it over to Genevieve. If Genevieve could unmute, she would, she would be happy. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria. I was thinking of so many different examples while you were talking. Um, just excellent. I, I know that for me, being an overachiever, um, I had to really learn um, to adopt some mindfulness practices. And one of the things that I want to want to lead everyone into is that your example is is going to translate to your staff. It's going to trickle down. You know, like with our children, it's not so much what we say as much as it is, as it is what we do. You know, I, I used to have a boss that would talk to me about needing to take more vacation time, um, but she herself never took any. So even though she was saying to me, you need to take more vacation time, I just never really felt comfortable with that. One of the things that happened to me, and this was right before I started my yoga teacher training and coming into more of a sense of what it was is to be mindful. My uh, granddaughter lived with me for a little bit and she's autistic, but she loves my phone, my iPhone. And so um, she would, when I got home from work on Friday afternoon, she would grab my phone and take it and hide it. And she would keep it all weekend long. And at first you all, the first couple of weekends, I was like, Oh, Somebody could be calling. Oh, I could be. But I'll tell you, within within several weeks, I was like, you know, it's okay. 
it's okay if Sophie takes the phone for the weekend and I am not 24 seven right there responding to everyone. And so one of the things um, that I wanted to share with everyone is to remember that true self-care and true mindfulness is more than a haphazard focus on immediate short-term actions to really just give us some ease, right? When we think of mindfulness, we think, well, we need to relax. I need to relax. I need to just calm down for a minute. But but well-being, overall well-being, like Gloria said, is a it's a holistic picture, but it's also a personal endeavor that happens over a lifetime. And, and really for each person is so individual. It cannot be still distilled down into just a right set of practices. So maybe yoga is really good for me. And it is good for me. Walking is another practice that people can do. You know, the rise in wellness apps. Have you all seen that? You know, uh, calm, uh, breathe. I mean, there's all kinds of wellness apps. Your insurance provider is now providing different kinds of programs that you can participate in. But you have to know yourself well enough to understand what tools are going to work for you and to be comfortable with that um, and, and to model it on an organizational basis. A couple of, I work with um, some colleagues at Mid-America MHTTC and they have what they call the ARC curriculum, um, the adult resilience curriculum that they have designed for educators and for health care, health care workers, sorry. And it's a module of 10 different things. It's a, it's a very extensive program. Um, it is free. If anybody's interested in that, I have that link on the resources. If you'd like to um, bring that into your organization, because they st they have an individual um, platform that then they build into an organizational. So different ways that you can um, instill philosophy and practices and that kind of thing in an organization. But one of the things that my colleagues have shared with me over and over again, and that the research shows, is that workforce retention um, is really influenced by how happy people are at work by incorporating some of the things that Gloria was talking about, you know, allowing for work schedules around circadian rhythms, um, the different hybrid, remote and hybrid kinds of work schedules. Um, we have at uh, the Mountain Plains MHTTC a series called Mindful Monday, which we started about a year and a half ago, and it has been so popular. You guys, it's a micro training. It's 30 minutes. Um, at lunch every other Monday, and we, I, I think there's probably about 100 people that show up every other week while we go through mindfulness practices, and some of them have been, so some examples of mindfulness practice can be as simple as the breath, because that brings you back to the present moment immediately. Um, just take a few minutes. It allows you to become the observer of your own behavior, to recognize when you're triggered, to allow you to not react to your environment, but to respond. Yeah, here's our resources. Um, and so uh, the Mindful Mondays, we'll start our next series on June 12th, but they're also recorded. So you can go in and if you have a few minutes, you can just um, pick a topic that you're interested in. We looked at mindfulness from creativity, from movement, from a somatic perspective, which is a little bit of what I showed you all when we started, the whole shaking off the energy uh, from the breath, from visualization, from creativity. So we have a we have a nice library. If you'd like to um, look at any of those kinds of activities, and they're all free, they're all free. All the resources through the MHTTC network are available for you to download or to uh, view or to even schedule a training or some TA if you'd like. So. Um, Excuse me. So bringing us into the into the present moment is something as simple as, you know, getting up and, and walking away from your desk, setting a limit on, on when you're going to take your phone, <laughs> when you're how, how late are you going to answer emails from your office if you don't have a granddaughter to come get your phone from you and 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 help you out with that. Um, so those are just some of the things that that we have been working on for the last year with the Mountain Plains MHTTC. For me personally, I became really interested in um, somatic wellness. I started, like a lot of people, with um, therapy. Um, that's what was interesting 
interest, I was interested in psychology. So I started in my own therapy, trying to figure out some, some things in my background. And as I have progressed through that and, and through yoga and through different trainings, um, I've come to realize that the somatic experience, your physical, your physical experience plays such a significant role in understanding and being able to step outside of yourself and watch yourself react. Um, there is a person that I work with that just the sound of her voice can just, <laughs> I mean, I've got, I'm, I'm triggered. And I've really had to through breath and watching myself take a step back. So again, mindfulness helps you not react, but respond. You are not, you are not a victim, not a victim, but you're not tied to your nervous system response. You're able to calm yourself down. And, and think through your reaction a little bit more. And as leaders, you know, the, the expectations that we put on ourselves are, are pretty intense. You know, you're always calm. You always have the answer. You're always, always in charge. And so to give yourself a little bit of grace and self-compassion, which, by the way, is another topic we, we handle in Mindful Mondays, um, through something as simple as the breath can, I think, create, um, even for yourself, a moment of wellness, which again will translate to your staff. So, and, and I have an exercise we can do, Lindsay, but we can also take some questions first. I was going to ask you a really, first. really quick question before sure. we uh, maybe sure. do think about that. The, uh, Alexandra asked if the Mindful Mondays, is that a, like a set of programs or is that something that was homegrown that you did with that? Uh, it's That's homegrown. Good. It's homegrown. I have a, um, I have a trainer out of Canada, Christina Ruggiero. She's she has one of those voices. I call it my yoga yeah. voice, you know. So <laughs> let's everybody take a deep breath. But she just has a very calming intonation and has a real passion for mindfulness. So we started this series, gosh, about a year ago, year and a half ago. Just wow. curious to see if people would be interested. Just curious to see, uh, kept it to 30 minutes because everybody is is so busy and it is hard to stay away from your phone or your email or, or your computer during the day. Um, and the response has just been overwhelming. But I think that what we're seeing is that people are understanding that there needs to be more of a, a work-life balance, both, both individually and as an organization, to be able to make it through. If COVID didn't do anything else for us, right? I think it really highlighted that need. Yeah. Yeah, sure did. I, uh, uh, thank you. I, I think that's really great that you, you showed those, those examples. I had, uh, it might've been Chris, Christine Lustig that we had our closer conversation with last week. We were talking about the reason why you should do mindfulness or, or meditation or something and it, and it teaches you that ability. So the more you practice, right. uh, the more than you're able to, you know, be, build that resilience and then you'll automatically respond with that breath in that moment instead of, and so the more you practice it, the better you are. And uh, that, that makes me think of, of the importance of, of showing why, why this is needed, um, especially to us as leaders, you know, why should I take that time? Um, and I know Genevieve, you, you mentioned a little bit about kind of that research, but have you, could you chat a little bit more about that? Um. I think, I think it is one of the things, that, let me, I have a couple of thoughts and clearly I've, they're not organized, but let me, let me try. Um, one Sorry. of the things <laughs> I think, uh, uh, one of the things I, I observed in myself was when I started therapy, for example, or even, mm -hmm. even when I started my yoga teacher training, I have a tendency to intellectualize everything. So if I think about mindfulness, then I will be mindful. So if I think I figured out why this person triggers me, then I will not be triggered. But, but mindfulness itself is a practice and it is a whole body practice. It is a holistic practice. So thinking is not enough. You need to be able to bring your whole person into it and that's your emotions and your body. And that's something that the breath does because it makes you pause. And again, um, when when we were practicing for this or when we were discussing this when we got started, you all, what Gloria and I both agreed upon is that what you incorporate or embrace as an individual as a leader of an organization, you will bring your organization into that. 
whether you are looking at needing to change just the culture, just the nonverbal culture, you know, don't mo through modeling, whether you need to make um, uh, policy changes. I know that my my colleagues over at the ARC have talked about that from an organizational perspective, particularly if you're in a big organization, right? Sometimes policy is uh, policy changes are really necessary to help support employee or staff wellness, um, whether that has to do with a flexible work schedule, whether that has to do with compensation. I, I uh, a friend, uh, Dr. Thayer from um, Region 7 talked about an organization he knew where people were compensated for, for um, enrolling in meditation classes or, or yoga classes or, or physical fitness, joining a gym. So they were actually, there was actual physical compensation. That will depend on your organization, you know, the resources that it has, it has available to it. Um, and again, the philosophy and mindset of, of people in higher up positions. So I think, I think that what you experience as an individual translates into what your organization will experience, particularly in a leadership role. And, but understanding that there are actual, there's been research done that shows that, that people rate, have much, have, have much higher levels of job satisfaction and tend to stay in their jobs much longer. When, when wellness, which we're now equating to mindfulness in, in this situation, is present and practiced and encouraged. Yeah, wow, I absolutely love that. Um, and I'd be interested in checking out uh, your your exercise that you mentioned. I am gonna ask a clarification question really quickly. Sure. Uh, one of our attendees said that there were the links to the Mindful Mondays, but is that open to anyone to attend or is it just intended for Mountain Plains staff? No, um, the Mountain Plains um, MHTTC serves the states. We have each, each MHTTC has a region. And so we serve the states of uh, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Utah, North Dakota, and South Dakota. But anyone can register for the, for the Mindful Mondays. We'll have, like I said, we'll have the next series starting on um, June 12th. You can go to our website, which I probably did not include in the resources. Don't tell, don't tell my boss. Um, <laughs> but I can, I can send that out to you. And you can anybody can register. Um, we have a focus on rural mental health. Each MHTTC has a specific focus, and our focus area is on providing training and TA to behavioral health and mental health providers in rural, remote, and frontier communities. And so, this kind of training is really helpful to them. They're very short on resources, very long on um, workloads. So this has been, this micro training has been really helpful for them. Mm, I bet, I bet. So anyone welcome to join, I, I might check it yes, out as well. Yes, any, <laughs> or, or even to, to do the recording. You know, if you have some right. staff oh, time, yeah. you can even just do the, do the recording and participate yeah. in the exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, so Gloria, did you want to add anything before we try that exercise and then get into the Q&A? Sure. A couple of uh, things that came to mind as I was listening to Genevieve, um, as far as creating that organizational culture is, you know, our, our devices, our, our smart watches, our phones send us reminders all the time of, you know, it's time to stand up. Um, and rather than ignoring that because we're in a meeting, you know, <laughs> say, oh, okay, my watch said it's time to stand up. Everybody stand up, stretch. Uh, and incorporating that into you know, the culture of your meetings, whether it's virtual or in person. Um, and also uh, starting meetings with a centering exercise like the box breathing that we did at the beginning of this. And you know, just asking people to participate, take a minute, let's just breathe for a minute and center ourselves here in this meeting or even in the midst of a meeting if it's getting emotionally charged or tense you know, stopping and saying, let's take a breath. And in virtual meetings, uh, it's also really important because you know, the, the being on Zoom or whatever platform all day now, you know, we don't have any time. We, we schedule minute to minute. Oh, I have to click off of this meeting so I can click onto the next meeting. Um, but 
really taking that time to, okay, we're going to take a five minute break, cameras off, you know, I encourage you to step away from your computer, not to your other screen to check your email, but, um, you know, to take a screen break, um, but to really build some of those into the norms of routines uh, in the day-to-day -day work life. I love that, or water break, right? <laughs> Something. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, everyone, uh, maybe while Genevieve uh, does this exercise, if you do have additional questions, um, let's do the exercise together and then we'll add them. <laughs> I'm trying to learn. <laughs> um, this is a, this is called the I am meditation and it is Really, I've used it during high stress moments. It's it's really excellent. It incorporates um, some breathing, some somatic principles, and uh, then a mantra and affirmation. So what what we're going to do? It's it's great for reprogramming the mind in the middle of high stress. I don't know that you could do this in the middle of a meeting, but you <laughs> you yourself, I think you know if you have time and you can go into your office or. I would encourage you, as you become more aware of yourself, as you become more in the present moment, which is, again, at the risk of repeating myself, what mindfulness is really about. You know, um, I'll think, well, I'm pretty mindful. I'm pretty mindful. And then I'll notice that I've added the wrong thing to the recipe that I'm cooking, the wrong amount of sugar or uh, cream cheese, because I'm thinking of all the other things I have to do. So I wasn't too mindful in that moment. Um, and that's just a that's just a simple that's just a simple example. But I think that most of us can relate to that. We're present ish. We're over here ish. And if there's a, a situation that's really upsetting or concerning us or difficult, whether it's personal or professional, and that's really one of the things I think we wanted to stress with this when Gloria and I talked about it. There's the line between personal and professional is becoming more and more blurred. You know, like I, I work 100% remote um, now, so I can really see it because I've got the cats coming and <laughs> the kids coming and all these other things. But um, as we as we strive for balance, and let's remember that that's an organic process and that there is no right or wrong collectively. There's not one size fits all. It's an individual thing. So with with that little little intro, I'm going to help. I'm going to have you guys um, participate in this I am meditation. This will take four minutes uh, and I'm gonna set a timer. And so for the, the first thing we wanna do is cross our right ankle, cross your right ankle over your left ankle. And then you need to cross your left wrist over your right wrist so that everything's in the opposite direction, if that makes sense. Um, and then, <clears throat> You want to think of an affirmation that you want to use, something that supports and calms you in the moment. Uh, some examples would be, I am enough, I am safe, I am love, I am peace. Whatever, whatever resonates with you in the moment, and that would speak to your own personal situation, right? Whatever you're dealing with, uh, personal or professional. Uh, so once you've decided on what your affirmation is, you have your right ankle crossed over your left ankle and your right wrist, uh, let's see, yeah, your left wrist over your right wrist. I am directionally challenged, guys. So once you're there, we wanna take a deep breath in and let's put the tongue at the top of our mouth when you're breathing in. And then when you breathe out, you can whisper or say quietly to yourself, I am whatever your affirmation is. I am enough. I am safe. Okay. And so let's do one more just test breath with everything crossed. Let's breathe in. Remember to keep the tongue, your tongue at the roof of your mouth and breathing out with your, with your affirmation. And I'll lead you through this, but I'm going to set the timer now. And it's amazing how long two minutes can, can seem when you're just sitting and being present. But let's begin. Breathing in, tongue at the top roof of your mouth. Breathing out, 
I am. Breathing in. Remember to keep the, your tongue at the roof of your mouth. And breathing out. I am. Now at your own pace. And I'll let you know when to switch. Breathing in, tongue at the roof of your mouth. And breathing out, I am. And now let's uh, change the direction. Let's put our, let's see, our left ankle over our right ankle and our right wrist over our left. I'll set the timer and begin breathing in. Tongue at the roof of your mouth and breathing out. I am. Breathing in, and breathing out, I am, at your own pace. Breathing in, and breathing out, I am. Breathing in, and breathing out, I am. And one last time, breathing in. I'm breathing out. I am. And then taking just a minute to sit in that and to bring yourself back by slowly opening your eyes. Mm -hmm. Seeing where your shoulders are now. Yeah, mine are usually up here. So if they're down, I notice Lindsay doing her neck. If anybody found themselves yawning, while they were while they were breathing, um, know that that's your body's way of trying to get more oxygen to it. So that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, if it seemed long to you, and I remember the first time I tried it, I thought, how can this be two minutes? 
but think about how long you'll you'll scroll through social media looking at your phone so it's it's interesting when you start to practice mindfulness in small simple ways the profound changes that you can experience even if it is on a personal level just calming yourself down allowing yourself to be the observer Well, thank you very much for leading us in that. That was uh, very relaxing to me and empowering <laughs> uh, with what I used in my mantra. So that's great. Thank you. Well, uh, we didn't receive any other questions in the Q&A, but I have a couple for you. And if you think of any while we are actually, thank you for not entering questions into the Q&A and participating in our exercise. There we go, we did it. <laughs> I fixed it for myself. If you have other ones, please uh, feel free to enter a couple into the question and answer box and we'll get to them. But I, did, we did have a question. We talked a little bit about it in our practice session, but you know, what if your leader, and Megan, I'm not, Megan is my supervisor. She is a very good role model of, of wellness and, and uh, <laughs> of well-being. But um, if, if a hypothetical leader does not role model or prioritize wellness, is there a way that you can advocate for wellness, um, even to those that are, you know, steps up from you or to team members that might be on the same, same level as you? What are your thoughts on that? Either of you. <laughs> I'll, I'll start. Um, wherever we are, we can start with ourselves and we can start incorporating these mindfulness practices into our day-to-day -day schedule. Um, and we all have people that we influence. So whether it's faculty, it's your, your students um, and your colleagues. Uh, so just starting to incorporate these practices where you can impact where you can, uh, people start to notice. And then it can start to trickle up. You know, or, or even uh, talking about that in a performance evaluation and saying, you know, you know, when you see, you know, the the good parts, you, you could comment that, oh, I was able to do that because I, I practice mindfulness, because I do these things. Uh, and so just making it, again, being authentic, being who you are and, and talking about that you know, I prioritize my mental health throughout the day by doing these practices. Genevieve, anything you want to add? I thought that was I thought that was perfect, Gloria. That was close to what I was going to say. I was also um, going to point out you all that um, we do have, um, like I was mentioning, the art curriculum, the adult resilience curriculum. Sometimes um, for different organizations a, um, a solidified approach or answer, something that's really concrete that they can take a look at and review might be helpful. There are um, different studies. I don't have it right here, but I know that there are also some different studies about work, work satisfaction that may be a good way to approach your administration. Um, I know on college campuses, mental health is becoming a huge issue for students. And so, um, and there's Megan, yeah, a wellness goal for your team. Um, so I know some of the providers or college um, campus providers and mental health providers that I work with are, are starting something similar. They are, are starting to model and, and bring those proposals to their administration for both uh, workforce re retention, job satisfaction, and just overall well-being. At least now, it's something that more and more organizations are becoming aware of, college campuses, private businesses, are becoming aware of. A couple of years ago, it wasn't, it wasn't so mainstream. Yeah, thank you both. I, I uh, think that's, that's both really important. I, I like the idea of, of kind of providing that, that information uh, to your your team or or your superiors, uh, and Gloria, the, you mentioned authenticity a few times with with how you're dealing with with your team members and your coworkers, and I think that's so important. Um, you know, knowing what what people are thinking and doing, and and what they're sharing, and um, just 
if that's authentically important to you, that will that will come out. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so Olivia had a great. Uh, uh, Genevieve, did you have something you wanted to add? I I, no, huh? You're fine. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Olivia had a great question. Uh, do you have any tips for staying calm in situations that are high stress or when <laughs> we need to calm down around a lot of people, for example, in a really stressful meeting? I am, um, Olivia, I feel you. I do. There's a couple of situations I've gone into where it's like, um, I think, first of all, awareness. The fact that you're aware that these are high stress situations or that it could be difficult or challenging really gives you an advantage. Again, remember, you want to step out of the reactive mode into the responsive mode. Um, even just taking a couple of deep breaths, um, picking up a glass of water and taking a drink before you respond. Um, anything that allows you to pause in the moment. And these are just these are just personal tips. This is just something that that you can use to kind of calm yourself down and and um, again become the observer in your situation. Um, and and to remember to not take anything personally. That's really hard in in a lot of these situations. I know, especially if it's charged um, or you feel passionately about it. But um, Christine mentioned something. A technique uh, last week in the casual conversation that I thought was really great, and and I've tried to employ it, and and maybe this maybe this will help you too. But she said, whenever you're uh, confronted with someone that you have difficulty with, or that maybe you don't see eye to eye with, try remembering, try using the phrase "just like me." They're just like me. They want to be happy, just like me. They want to be successful just like me. They want to come up with a solution, just like me. Um, I have not had 100% success with that. I'll be really honest with everybody. <laughs> but <laughs> what it does do is, again, it gives me that moment, that pause, so that even if I'm thinking, no, they don't, um, which is <laughs> a bit kind of <laughs> some of my challenge, it, it still gives me a moment to pause and maybe to listen with the intent to understand. Um, and if I can't do that, then at least I haven't lost my temper or said something that I will really regret. And it gives me it gives me some more time to think about that and how I want to approach the situation. It doesn't exacerbate the situation. So I don't know if those things help, but that's what I'm trying. I think that's great. Uh, Gloria, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah. You don't um, have to, no pressure. <laughs> no, that pause is um, is so important, you know, taking a drink of water, taking a breath, but also being mindful of the somatic, of where you hold stress in your body. So whether it's your shoulders up here or it's your jaw, um, while you're taking that breath, you check in with your body and, and see where you are. And if you know, I know for me, it's oftentimes in my jaw, and, you know, just releasing those muscles and, and that tension, um, it helps to ground you too uh, when you're in the midst of a lot of people in a meeting and you feel, uh, you know, that you, you need some mindfulness. Um, like checking in with your body in, in that just couple of seconds that you're taking a breath or a drink of water. Um, before you respond uh, will be helpful too. And uh, we did have an, oh, thank you. Thank you, Gloria. I agree that, that mine's always in my shoulder and my jaw too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. Up around my ears, up around my ears. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we did have someone in the chat ask to restate the get out of the responsive mode. Was that the, hopefully we answered your question, was that the, um, that person is just like me, um, for an example, they need to get to work on time just like me, or um, throw in the chat if there, if there was a different um, statement that you were looking for. Thank you. Um, and I haven't received any other questions, but I did want to reiterate, oh, not the just like me, okay. Uh, Genevieve, did you have another 
kind of get out of this responsive mode? I I think um I think maybe it was the reactive mode. We want to pause so that we don't react. We can be responsive. So maybe I wasn't clear. So often when we're triggered, reactive. sorry about yes, that. Yes, yes. So often when we're triggered, um, and remember that the trauma is is your body responding to a, a past experience. Your body is just trying to protect you. It's not trying to cause problems. And so it might not even be that that particular comment. It could be like I mentioned, uh, the tone of voice or a smell. Um, lots of these things within your nervous system, if you're not aware of your body, like Gloria was saying, if you're not in the present moment, then we have everyone. And it's not you, it's me, it's everyone. We all have a tendency to be more reactive than responsive. So by pausing, whether that is paying attention to our physical self, whether it's taking a, a breath, whether it's picking up a glass of water before you say something, I, I got that one from my divorce attorney, by the way. So that was an expensive piece of advice, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> um, or um, whether it is thinking, well, they're just like me. So, so any of those things allow you to pause and allow you to not be reactive but instead be responsive to the situation. So I hope that helps. Huh. That as well, Rebecca. Going to the balcony, that's good. Well, thank you both of you so very much. And thank you everyone for your questions and comments. That's been, been wonderful to spend this time with you. Uh, so Megan, we're gonna turn it back over to you. Great. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Genevieve and Gloria. That was a great hour well spent. And thank you to the participants for being here today. We do have a closer look guide coming out, which will include some of these tips, as well as some recommendations for why you should do this. You know, it's not, it, not just anecdotal. Again, any of the resources that sh were shared will be provided via email to you next week. And then you can always visit our website for links to previous webcasts. Stay connected with WCET. We're constantly doing work around thematic areas we think are important to higher learning and digital learning. And we have a couple upcoming events. Next month, our theme is micro-credentials. So we'll be doing a webcast and closer conversation on micro-credentials. And then we also have a, another webinar with Van Davis, our in-house expert on AI. And that's not to leave Gloria behind, we just can't use her for everything as much as we would like to, but she's also integral in our work around AI and she'll be featured at the annual meeting. Speaking of the annual meeting, save the date. Registration is open October 25th through 27th is the annual meeting. And this is the first year that we will have as we in, conjunct in conjunction with the annual meeting, as we is the annual summit for women in e-learning. So everyone is welcome to register and attend and come for either WCET or as we will be in New Orleans this year. And lastly, I just want to quickly acknowledge our sponsors and our supporting members. They help underwrite much of our events and programs here at WCET. So again, thank you to everyone. Be well, enjoy the long weekend, and we'll see you soon. Take care. <laughs>